I mean, as you approach old head status mm -hmm. and you've seen a number of things over the last couple of years, not necessarily on oddball, but around here, but also on oddball because Charlotte is at least theoretically, mathematically younger than you are. Mm. I think she's younger than me in every well, sense. Well, spir spiritually, in some ways, she can uh, she can be older. Uh, no, so not even spiritually. Okay, fair <laughs> what enough. What are you talking about? Oddball is every day. I've made fun of Charlotte from for some of her old woman sensibilities, oh, regardless. Like she dressed up as Groucho Are you Marx having a spiritually old off with yeah, Charlotte? Yeah, absolutely. And I win every time. The, the larger point that I was trying to make is that you are somebody who cares deeply about basketball. You yes. have seen yourself age out in some places generationally where you don't connect with the 20-year-old player necessarily. What just happened at the All-Star game was reacted to very viscerally by people who care about basketball and people who care about that game as mattering back from when Bird and Magic and Michael cared about it. And they expect these players to carry on that legacy respectfully. So I'm asking you without being an emotional old head and as a practical businessman, the damage is what when the NBA is releasing, hey, our ratings were good. So there's a couple of things going on. Number one, you don't have to go to back to Bird and Magic and Jordan. Just today I watched film from 2013 All-Star Game, which was basically a decade ago, of Kobe defending LeBron. And I'm not just talking about, like, getting a hand up. I'm talking about talking, about switching, about picking him up full court. This happened. We, we had this in these kids' lifetime. They grew up watching all-star games that were competitive at some point. Maybe not the whole game, but at some point were competitive defensively. And so I don't know if you know this, Dan. Do you know how many personal fouls happened on Sunday? Weren't there like two, shot, two free throws shot by one team? There were three fouls. That means if you took every foul of every player in that game and gave them just to one guy, he wouldn't even be in foul trouble in the first half of a game. There were Three block shots, maybe two, two or three block shots. It, 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 it's not a game. It is literally just people watching other people dribble up and take a shot, and then, okay, now it's my turn. And so, But I'm asking you the, about the, rating, the real so the, damage. The real damage is this, Dan. You know what upfronts are? Do I have to explain yes. what upfronts are uh, to, uh, to just, the audience? It's, it's sales for television uh, projects, what's coming up. The advertisers can know what's coming up. Right, and, and what they do is they have the talent – for these different programs, for instance, Mike Golick and Mike Greenberg will show up and let everybody know all the great new things that are going to happen this season as a result of this. And so you should sponsor us, put more money in us, right? All-Star Weekend is a bit like that. It's like upfronts, right? You're telling sponsors, and in this case, we're also telling broadcasters, hey, this is a crown jewel. When Turner pays money for their TV package, it's not like an even amount of money for all the games. There's a certain premium for having playoff games, including one of the conference finals. There's a certain premium for having opening night. There's a certain premium for having MLK Day games for Turner. And there's a huge premium for the All-Star Weekend to have exclusivity on that, that only the celebrity game goes to ESPN. So when we're sitting here on the cusp of another rights deal, which will give us a lot of money, which will fuel the BRI, which fuels the salary cap, which fuels what the maximum salaries are. So a very real chain reaction of if this thing turns into a weekend every year, the money we get for it goes down, which means the money that goes to the cap goes down, which means the maximum salaries go down, which means you cost yourself money because you were too cool to get a hand up. It's ridiculous. And again, I'm not asking for loose balls and flagrant fouls. I'm just asking for amount of competitive desire that occurred with players that were playing in that game. Do you believe the ratings or not? I, first of all, I don't believe any ratings, as you said earlier, especially now, because they're taking and twisting any which way of people logging and streaming or whatever as that counts as someone watching. On top of that, even if I were to take it as at least comparable to last year's ratings in terms of the methodology – I would say the return from east to east to west would bring that about. Like people are like, okay, they're going back to normal. And the commissioner spent a whole week telling everyone, hey, it's going to be better this year. It's going to be better this year. Dan, you saw the look on his face. You heard his voice. He looked crestfallen. Dog, that's not 
that that's not someone say, hey, we did good here today. Well, I mean, because it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to come out all week and say this year they try, and you've never heard such complaints about not trying. The optics, this is the part, though. I really don't think it's about the game. I think it's about how bad these optics are. If you're going to hate the athlete for making a lot of money, it feels disrespectful to you that the greatest of the stars can't do us the courtesy of – showing joy about what they do for a living because uh, joy is at the center of why you pay to consume it. So, Dan, there's a couple of things, right? One of them is we're doing a thing here. I don't know if you guys know this. We're selling this thing. We are uh, In all, partnership. We are all actively selling this thing. All of us, right? We're all at the upfront. It's all yes. you stars who are making all this money. But I understand after 15 years of LeBron James and player empowerment how those guys say no man i don't need to share this with you i'm a star now and i don't need to care about the next generation um funny enough when there was a graph that came out that showed the viewership in the millions from 2012 or 11 down to what we are now and obviously went from like 10 million all the way down to like four something that we've seen now i mean in your opinion is it the players take the identity of the top dog in the league where Kobe was like, I'm going to buckle down and play defense. And LeBron's been like, man, I don't really care about this. I don't care about the dunk contest. I don't care about the all-star game. And people have followed suit with that. I would say, so this is what I would say. Obviously very few guys are going out there Kobe style, right? That's, that's another level, but LeBron has been one of the better ones to me. Now Sunday night minutes restriction. He's a hundred years old. We allow him, we give him that grace. Giannis plays hard. Devin Booker plays hard. I think. Damian Lillard plays hard. But at the end of the day, you got guys that clearly don't give a damn. I'm going to name names. Luka Doncic and Anthony Edwards clearly did not care. They told you. Anthony Edwards told you afterwards, like, I'm not going to do this. And so this is the part where part of it is it comes on the league and the Players Association to impress upon them, guys, this is a thing. I'm not saying go get hurt. I'm, but also, no one has ever gotten hurt in the history of the All-Star you guys game think other that, than Kobe getting you, his nose bloody. Do you guys think that I, – I believe that that was Adam Silver's most embarrassing public moment. I've never seen him – I've never seen him feel that negative. But uh, – I've but, never – Dan, forget about embarrassing. I've never seen Adam Silver not be a – a beacon of positivity, even when he was kicking Donald Sterling no, but, out the league. No, but you he, say forget embarrassment. What I saw on the leader and commissioner of the league was he was rendered publicly useless by his employees. Like, I thought he was embarrassed to be out in front of people after that game on behalf of the league that he sells. On behalf of the message that he was putting out all weekend long is what it was. The other part of this, though, Dan, that people don't talk about, and I think – this is a, a very actionable place. I'm going to put some of this on the coaches. You see Luke. I thought Do Doc coached a hell of a game. A good I mean, offense, thanks. good system. That was a very, very astute observation by you. I appreciate that. I mean, they won in almost a blowout. It was yeah. his best coach game of the year, I thought. You clearly watched a lot of basketball. I, I really appreciate that about you. Very nice. It's a good question. Good question. It does <laughs> make you feel good when you say that because it's impression. like, oh, I know ball. Yeah. I honestly forgot he was Thanks, doing Doc. a bit. I was like, wow, look at me. That was great. <laughs> see how easy it is it's for him? Oh, my no, God. I love this guy. <laughs> you see how easy it is for him. But, but then, like, the reality is if I'm Chris Finch, and I, I don't want to put him on, on Jump Street, but I'm just using his name because he was coaching the West. And I see Luca doing what he's doing. I'm like, Luca, sit down. Book, get in there. You get to watch your rival go out there and play. And if Luca, I don't give a damn how many votes you got. You're getting seven minutes tonight. If coaches start playing the guys who take it seriously and benching the guys, two, one of two things is going to happen. Either these guys are going to be like, well, damn, I, I got to take it seriously too so I can get back in this game. Or you're going to pout and say, I don't want to be an all-star. And in which case, take your ass home. Take your ass home. The most shocking part of the whole night was learning who Chris Finch was. I was like, <laughs> who does he coach, Chris? Uh, Minnesota. I yeah. learned that well the done. other night. But before that. We you, talked about it on Radio Row. You didn't know guys. Jonathan Kaminga. I know. Wow. He'll Proudly. get to it. We did he'll, a whole bit about he'll this. He'll get to it in the playoffs. Chris will get to it in it the playoffs. It just started like this week basketball. By the way, the other thing that's going to save this is a glimmer of a hope. I saw it on Friday night during the skills competition of all places where Victor Weminyama and Paolo Bancaro and Anthony Edwards were a team of all number one overall picks competing in skills competition. And Weminyama's like, all right, guys, let's do this. Let's go. And he goes to it, and, he, and, he, and then he's trying. And then Anthony Edwards comes out and shoots left-handed. And Wemby was like, <laughs> what the F are you doing? 
that's the only thing that's going to change it. It has to happen from within on some level, which is the big dogs. The big dogs come in and they care. And Victor Wembanyama, we're all excited for him, but I think that's the most excited I've ever been because I saw he cared and he was disgusted by that. And until you got more guys who are okay with being vocal, he's a rookie now, he can't be vocal. In a couple of years when he's the, one of the best players, he can be vocal and say, hey, stop doing that in the same way that Kobe did. This feels like a lot of faux outrage. By who? Like outside of Bob Ryan and David Aldridge. No, Amin is bothered. Is actually Amin is mad about this. Stephen A is mad about Chris, it. Chris, Chris, did you hear anyone, anyone, name one person that you know that said that game was really good? No, but I'm also watching it, and it's just I, I take it for what it is. No, like it's your, an your, exhibition your, your game. Your opinion is no, though, because you don't actually care very much. You just got done saying I'll pay attention as soon as football's over. Fair. You don't. Also, Chris. But a lot of people are like me. No, but, it's like it's not that big. A, it's it's, it, a, it's it an exhibition game. Like, what do you guys want Chris, from these dudes? Chris, you say that, and I tell you, ten years ago, we got competitiveness, we got guys trying, and we got better ratings. Let someone twist an ankle. You we, guys are gonna totally flip on this. We got better ratings. We got better ratings. Let Wem Benyama go down playing Chris, hard in an All Star game, and everyone's gonna take flip name, their script. Name on a this. guy who got hurt at All Star game, and then that cost him games for the rest of the year, even one game. I don't have an answer for your question. Co Kobe Bryant broke his nose and was uh, Wade. And, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> like that's that's the closest. Let's look at how they're broadcasting the game because they have the all cast now. Which mm -hmm. side did you watch? Did you watch the regular broadcast? Gotta go Barkley the there. I went Barkley, Draymond, and. How do you Rose, not go man. Barkley and Draymond? I felt Draymond, so bad for Reggie Miller. The, the line of the night, Draymond said, "This is like a, a old school Minnesota game for Carl Anthony Towns." It's great. He's got fifty, and they're down by twenty. Put it on the poll, please. Which one did you watch at Levitard show? The regular broadcast or Draymond and Charles? Because Draymond and Charles is cheating a little bit. I do feel like this is how the NBA wins. They have their all-star game, make it n not matter, make everyone argue about it because they don't have a game for four more days. This is how they win. Yeah. I don't think driving, it's – We're I, driving I, NBA conversation uh, during the break. I Chris Cody, you might be onto something. I don't think it's banned. Uh, how do you make money off of it? We, we've been in this. You turn it into a party for the younger generation. You turn it into something that is different the from what it's been. Saturday night event was a huge success, Just too, turn with it, Sabrina and man, Steph. You can't tell me Indianapolis did not yeah. love having that in their city. You, you can't tell me it's not a jewel. Do you know why, Do you know why, Jess, it was a, a great success? Because it was two star players actually trying. Oh, my God. What? Trying? Oh, effort. What, what, what madness is this? Well, then why do you need a game? Let's just do that for three days. Here We're we going to talk about the late the article in the cut about the lady who put... Yeah! Yeah, here when we, we go. say in the cut, it's a, what does that mean? What the hell? No, because I know. Cause okay, save it for the show. You know save it for the show. I thought, I thought we were already on air. I thought you guys were going already. We were going to talk the Beatles, but the whole thing got sabotaged because Lucy and Jessica and Amin are going crazy about one story that Tony knows about, but I think Roy, Chris, and I are in the dark about it, so help yeah. us out. Okay, so basically last week this this story started trending on Twitter of this woman who's like a financial writer, like that's her entire job, and how she got scammed. Let me just read the headline. Okay. The day I put $50,000 in a shoebox and handed it to a stranger, I never thought I was the kind of person to fall for a scam. This story was crazy. Insane. This woman basically got like a text message from Amazon that was like, oh, someone's like hacked into your account and has your info. They call her, they give her name and like her social security number. She's like, well, this has oh. to be real. And they were like, we are with the FBI, the CIA. Someone is using your social security number. Oh. She's like logs into her account. She's like, I don't really see anything. I don't know anything that's going on. But they had enough personal information about her that she was like, you know, You've got a good point here. This is absolutely <laughs> happening. And they were like, well, the th how much money do you have in your savings account? And she told them, and they were like, well, take out the money that you would need for a month, but you cannot tell your husband. And, they, <laughs> and, and she's like, why can't I tell my husband? I trust my husband. And they're like, your husband will get implicated if if he finds out about this and she's people like you know so what stupid. and her whole job is to teach people like not to do this she's like a financial advice columnist yeah, yeah. Crazy. oh no so he's gotta get fired she goes to the bank and she takes fifty thousand dollars out this is all happening in one day by cash. the way cash cash and like What's the limit on yeah no it's a fair Whoa. question 
There's a lot of questions, but yeah. Lucy, please finish. Yeah, she please so finish she the takes story. the money out. She still hasn't told her husband. And so they were like, okay, we're going to have somebody drive by and you'll just walk out, give us the cash <laughs> so that we can put it in like bonds or something yeah, that, that will like bonds. be able to come back to you so it's not traced. <laughs> it, it was insane. And she was like, are you sure? Like, you sure I can't tell my husband? And they were like, yeah, like you can't. She's like, well, it's Halloween. I have to take my kid trick or treating. And she was like, and, and they were like, it, just don't get your kid involved. It's fine. <laughs> so this woman, she goes, finds a shoebox, puts the $50,000 in the shoebox. They pull up, goes up to a van. They roll down the window. She hands them the $50,000, walks back up the stairs. And is like, oh, that might have been a bad idea. I might have just got scammed. Then she told her husband, and he was like, yeah, obviously that was a scam. What are you talking about? Like, the government isn't, (laughs) like, trying to take this money from you. She ends up, like, reaching out to the FBI, the CIA, whatever, and they're like, yeah, we're never going to ask you to do that. And then she was like... I got to write this down and I got to share it with Tony. What have you written down? I've written down a couple things, Dano, as financial writer. I don't know. It needs to be fired, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Number one rule. Number one rule. Federal agencies, IRS, CIA, FBI will never call you or text you telling you to do something Mm -hmm. ever. Never. That's one. Two, as Amin and I said in our personal show, they break down the door with windbreakers. Yep. That's how they they, don't call. They break the door down. That's how they contact you. Windbreakers. It did lead to a whole variety of a follow up questions because my initial thought also, Chris Cody said, isn't there a limit to how much cash you can withdraw from a bank? Like I would have I don't know, because first of all, having like fifty thousand dollars like liquid that you can withdraw. You think there you think there's a limit? I don't think I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure how wealthy this person otherwise. She had 80,000. She told she told the person who was pretending to be a CIA agent. A CIA agent. That's my favorite part. On the phone with her, who was connected to her via Amazon. Air quotes, Amazon. She told them she had $80,000. That was her entire life savings. She's, I think, a 40-year-old woman with a kid and a husband and lives in Brooklyn. And he said, what Lucy said, like, take out what you need for a year. And so she took out 50K. And he he was like, take out 50K. She's like, okay, I will. So she took out... $50,000 $50,000 and one withdrawal at the bank, like went and talked to a banker in person. They gave her the money. And I didn't even think that was a thing that could happen. I don't, I don't think there are limits, but I do think they will call managers over for approval at five or $10,000. And maybe but ask some follow-ups. Yo, know, I just love the idea of Jack Ryan working for the CIA. I'm taking a break from destabilizing a foreign government. To let you know that Amazon account might have been hacked, so I need your money now. How does that make – is she – CIA? So, she's, I know. she's a moron. Well, she, uh, it's official. Yeah. You're she, a moron. She's gullible. She clearly was very vulnerable and paranoid and fell for it. And, and like, to be, I guess, like, this is where I, I found myself over the last week after I read this story, because there's a lot of people following on, like, two sides of this debate. Like, I got in an argument with my friend Priya right after I read this, because Priya. Priya was like, this woman's a, an idiot. And I was like, I still feel bad for her, though. Like, even though she did something that I couldn't fathom doing or fathom anyone I know being gullible enough to do, I still feel bad. And Priya's like, I don't. And the parts of it was because in this article, she wrote about how, like, the most common people that get scammed are uneducated and lonely and, and poor. And she's none of those things. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's kind of icky. And so there was a lot to a lot of, like gray area here and, and people not really knowing if they should empathize or not knowing oh, if but it's I, fair I mean, to I mean a, will a almost, fucking idiot. I mean will almost always fall on the line of crushing anybody who's got so little street smarts that they get suckered by a dumb scam. I mean is almost fundamentally incapable of showing that person any compassion. It's, uh, it's incomprehensibly stupid. It, so I once asked, like, oh, you know what's the worst thing about these scams are with the emails or whatever? Like, I'm a Nigerian prince and da da da. I said the number of misspellings and stuff. You said they, I said they can't even be bothered to spell it all right. And someone pointed out to me, like, no, they do that because they know if you even entertain it for a second with all these misspellings, you definitely have a sucker on the line. So saying, hey, I'm with the CIA, and she says, go on. They automatically know. But oh, this is- uh, Amin also has, I believe, an acidic hostility to if you're gullible, this gullible, you've learned nothing. Life's been too easy for you if you're still this naive that you have 50000 If I feel like I can speak for Amin when I say if that $50,000 can be taken from you that easily, you don't deserve to have it. This is rich, though, coming from a show that gets scammed by fake tweets once a week. 
I I extend to all the stupid people that kind of compassion. I There's feel no difference, me too. Though, Dan. I, I'm talking about a mean here, not me. You're not me. putting 50k in a shoebox and hanging it over somebody on Twitter. Oh, but I One. can. I, I agree with you. I'm I, kind of trying to play devil's advocate here because, like I tweets, said, you know, incomprehensible. There could be stupid. an orca here. I don't know. Two. Have compassion for stupid people. I can be scammed this way. I have recently call been scammed. Me. If somebody I, asks you for fifty yes. grand, Wait, call tell me. Tell us your scam. I'll sorry, figure it out. What? Better yet, give me the fifty grand and let me negotiate with exactly. them. Exactly. I'll figure it out for exactly. you. Exactly. And if they're if they're above board, I'll say, hey, Dan, you know what? They were cool. I gave them the money. They were with the CIA, by the way. I'm going to tell uh, you, coming home, my wife is vastly more street smart than I am. I am a sucker for somebody who needs no. some help. And. <laughs> I am. I can be. I can be <laughs> gullible, and so I've rarely felt quite as vulnerable as when I came home and told her the following story. And her response was to look at me and just say, "You've been scammed," and and it it undressed me. My my clothes should have just fallen straight to the floor. I there love this story already. In shriveled up shame because I I felt good about what I had done, but I'm coming up on. The uh, I'm coming onto the highway from an exit ramp that's got a fairly decent amount of traffic. And off to the side of the road is a car with a guy who seems super desperate, okay? And he comes to my car because I pull over to see if he needs some help because he's on the side of the road and he seems sort of panicked. And it's a really public place, okay? And he points to his family back in the car. And there is a family. of There are some kids in the car. And he comes over and he's offering to sell me his jewelry because he's got an emergency. He's got to get a flight out and his car has broken down. And so I go into my wallet. I don't want his jewelry. He's offering to sell me his, his necklace, his, his watch. You, you guys see this whole scam unfolding in a way that's yeah. super obvious? You'll okay. never buy the jewelry. My car broke down and I need to get a flight? That already doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he was returning his rental car. Oh, what it, he, he, it's, and, and he was in a was panic. Let me see the rental I, agreement. I, I, what was the tag, it? Dano? So you guys are going to ask all sorts of follow-up questions on no? the side of a highway. On the on the on the well, entrance no. ramp. This guy looked desperate though. Most of the time, they look real content on the side of the I would have just kept driving. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of there. <laughs> huh? Sounds like they have car problems. <laughs> just, just I'm the only AAA, one. AAA, buddy. Okay, yeah. so Road every, Ranger. All right. I, I mean, think you're also like you have the most. Like you're, you're you know you come from wealth. Yeah. So I think you have like what am I gonna do for the guy? I like, come from wealth. Uh, no, you don't come from wealth. I'm saying oh, you have yeah. money. Oh. He, just, <laughs> he just said you have no street cred. No, I'm saying you have money, so you it's like for you, like silver all right, what, what spooner. Do you need? What do you need? I mean, I, to be fair, like this is what's so insidious about scammers because people are way more skeptical of people that actually need help if you encounter them in the real world, which yeah. a lot of people genuinely need help, and you're just automatically your guards up because there are so many people calling random women and saying, hi, I'm from the CIA. Can you put $50,000 in a shoebox, please, and deliver it to an unmarked car outside? I'll be honest with you. This story makes me angry for one reason and one reason only. And it's not that this woman was gullible or stupid or whatever, although she is. Um, it's that it's that easy to get $50,000 and I've been working this whole time like a dumbass showing up to work and giving you guys entertainment and stuff and flying cross country and meanwhile I could just say hey I'm from the CIA a couple me- licks a year you're good oh my god <laughs> what do you think Stugatz is right now by the way He's he on took vacation. that 50k and he went he took that, out of here he took that uh, that book advance and disappeared for a week and put Mina, me, Greg Cody and Andre Dawson on deadline <laughs> I do think the real moral of the story here, never answer your phone. Yes. Never. First mistake. I will never answer an unknown call. I Once she did that, I was like, I don't feel bad for I him. won't answer a known call because there was a point in the story where she said, prove that you are who you say you are. And he called her from a spoofed number. And she said, hey, can't this be like a spoofed number? And, and he was like, nope, you can't spoof a government agency. And she's like, well, all right, I'll take your word for it. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, no. He Look up the area revenge. code. Uh, again, though, I want to go back to my situation and the way that you guys are mocking me yeah. as if I'm the biggest fool in the world you for are. thinking that a desperate father with kids in a mini or in a car, in a rental car, would be uh, scared and worried on the side of the road. It's gross what that guy's doing, by the way. How much money did you give him? I gave him $100. Yeah, not as bad as I thought. Yeah, it's it's right. what Is that I, all the keys you had? It's or what was I, it no, like, no, you know what, you get no. This, he, well, he, he, he was a, after I gave the hundred and he kept asking for more. I'm like, no. Ooh, the radar went up. Wait a second. I'm like, no. This boop, is. Boop, 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 boop. 
This that right, like, and, but it was urgent. It was so urgent that I felt. Th- that's what the first time I felt the grift. Like I like you like the next day in the same traffic and this guy's there again and you're like, what the? F- I'm then, then. still carrying cash, huh? Let me. Never have cash. Never answer the phone. And the kids are still there. <laughs> the kids aren't kids. They're See you guys later. When he got me again with it the following Friday, I got suspicious. That's when I knew. I'm going to put off that love is blind conversation until tomorrow. I'm also. I think going to put off that Beatles conversation. Aww. I don't know. We'll see if somebody wins an argument before the end of the show to have the conversation about a, Be- a Beatles biopic that I thought was out already. That's not coming out for three years. We'll get, we'll it's get actually four biopics. Four. Okay, mine's going to be boring. <laughs> wow. Which one was that? Yeah, yeah, which I one was that? that? I'm Ringo. Ringo. Oh, you're Ringo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who's going to watch mine? <laughs> George Harrison. Huh? I'm excited for Ringos. Yeah. The TikTok kids uh, are going to love Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> Limited fake Ringo, welcome to the Kinda program. Kind of sound like all of them. You have uh, you have four years to perfect the impersonation and see if it has more range than that. Uh, I wanted though to get into something that uh, made me feel, as things often do these days, more and more ancient. I remember the first time I showed up on the set of Pardon the Interruption, Tony Kornheiser was already complaining about being old, and he's only gotten older since. Uh, and he's more and more of a curmudgeon. And I can't believe I am now him in this regard around here. Tony asked me before the show today, and he was serious about this. I know Pat Sajak is an old head, and he said once upon a time on this show, he said, you no longer have to learn anything. He was lamenting it. You just have to know how to find it. It's a new way of learning. But Tony asked me before the show today something that was legitimately stupefying to me which is, how did you get to places before you had the internet to tell you when you were lost? He asked me, and it was genuine curiosity he had, and, and I looked at him, and I'm like, you mean like a map? Like, or asking, a paper map. Or asking directions? You mean mapquest.com. Tony, it was a crazy time, bro. So it was, <laughs> it was born of this idea, right? So I had ordered a pizza the other day, and I just take for granted that they know the address to my house because they put it in their GPS and they show up 30 minutes later. Here's your pie. So I was thinking, I was like, man, 1993, you call up your chain pizza store and be like, hey, I want after two like pepperoni a Marlins pizza. Game, I want one shacaroni pizza. I'm six years old after like, a Marlins what? game. Yep. Yeah, like I want two pepperoni pies, send them to the house, you know, 8374 Southwest 837th Ave. And the guy's like, okay, be there in 30 minutes. They would make the pizza. Then a guy would get in the car and just, go? and just go find your house. And 30 minutes later, hey, buddy, here's your pies. And it's like, how did you find Like, me? Does he look at the street number first? Like, what do you look at first? So the street number tells you. The zip code tells you also. They have maps to tell you where certain street. Uh, Hold on, Jessica. What are you laughing at so hysterically back there? <laughs> I think Chris Cody is feels like a need to advance um, conversations in the show, but in doing so is playing a very dumb character. And lately he has been saying very stupid things and then reassuring all of us that he actually knows the answer to the stupid thing he just said because I think he thinks that his on-show persona nah, I know. is now bleeding into our actual perceptions of him as a human being. So he's making the joke on air for the audience. Audience, being a little dumber than he actually is. What do you look at first, the street or the number? Does the zip code matter? <laughs> but Tony was asking legitimately before the show. He's looking at me stupefied. He, he wasn't doing content. He was asking as a genuine curiosity. Hey, caveman, back before you could just go to your phone and get to where you wanted to go, how did you do it? I I lived it, and I would still explain to people, do you know how hard it was to connect with somebody outside of a stadium before cell phones if one of you was lost? Oh, man. Was mapping and driving a thing back then? Yo. Instead of texting and driving, it's like you're, you're some guy's going down the street, and he's like, yes. Oh. You, I'm trying you're at to the National Lampoon. Turn this light on. There's no yes. flashlight. There's no phone light. National so Lampoon's it's like, push vacation. the button here. Let me angle it up. Ah. 
People yeah. had physical maps in their cars. In the car. No way. Do you guys, did your parents ever like put the fear in God in you that if you turned the light on inside your car, yes. you were going to go Federal to jail? Prison. <laughs> Federal prison I, if you turned I, on the light. Mm-hmm. I believed that until a very late, age, like until I was driving. I was like, is, turn the light off! Is that what they got pulled over? They all did it to all of us. Is yeah. that yes, what that did. glove box is for? The maps? They, I was wondering. Wonder, I'm always gloves, like, actually. Yeah, gloves, yeah. Gloves, gloves. No way. <laughs> yeah. People box. actually put oh, gloves in there? Gloves. In other, yes, in, in colder cities, yes. But that's also, no. I well, all right, let's ask these questions. At Levitar Show, glove compartment, is it? It should be a map compartment. For your registration, for your gloves. For your weed. Or for your the pistola. Blick. Or yeah. for your pistol. The blicky. <laughs> uh, I, I also, I, I'd like to understand legitimately as I speak to some younger people. You're really confused about this? You don't you don't know what it's like to just roll down your window and ask someone for directions in a neighborhood? It's only more so for the pizza delivery guy. That's the only guy. That's that's where I'm like so I I was born in a generation where we had to learn the streets prior to the GPS coming out, right? So like if you put me anywhere in Miami, I will figure out where to go and how to get back home cuz naturally I know that Flagler Zero Street, everything above is northwest, everything about uh, below is southwest. Crap, court Road, no, Avenue Place. You know what? I'm going to stop you right here, Tony, and I'm going to make you as an exercise go with John Reed to Hialeah, where the streets have no oh, names. Oh, oh, that's a different story, sense. Dano. And I'm a, as, a, as, a, as a grid of death punishment, I'm going to have. Hialeah is famously, you don't know, the streets don't make any sense. That is true. And so if I put you in Hialeah, I could lose Tony for three days with John Reed. Take their phones. If for I make, sure. yes, I tell him, you cannot get out of here. Without a map, find this location where my father had ran a factory in Hialeah. Huh? You will get lost in the Everglades. The problem is that it's like East 49th Street, but also 103rd Street <laughs> on the same on the same street, and they're like half and half on the. I, I've noticed that people from New York are better at this than most people. Like I heard, I mean, talking to someone the other day about like, where are you in New York? Oh, 34th and 50th. No, but the like, streets make sense but there. I'm just saying, it's, it's a grid just, system. Yeah. They're, they're, it's the easiest it's, in New York. So, and, and it's I'm going to be honest with you, it's easy anywhere where it's a grid because Phoenix is a grid. So if someone gives me cross streets, I know exactly where they live. Like, it's, all right, I'll find it. When it's name streets, that's when you're cooked. No, the, it's like, Phoenix, no but Phoenix is name streets in a grid. But you can find it easy. If someone says, oh, I'm on the corner of Camelback and Central, like I know exactly where that is. Let's make a grid of death punishment, Tony. You have to create the content one day trying to get out of Hialeah without uh, no, why Hialeah? Without Hialeah. your phone. Because it's, it's a great the, idea. Because it's the hardest. Hialeah. Because it's the only place that doesn't coincide with the grid of the, Miami. That makes no sense. You're on 49th Street one second, and then now you're on 12th. And it doesn't make any sense. And it's because Jose said so. Right. So, Tony, is, is it because the pizza person has to know so many addresses that you're that impressed with him because you as just a, a regular you know teenager you probably know where like your three best friends live sure. and how to get there you know how sure. to get to school maybe basketball practice but you're saying the pizza delivery person he knew everybody so you would call everyone. and okay. then sometimes he would know people by voice mm-hmm. right so my hey, dad tony. would call hey tony all right yeah let's do it. and then like you things you want a shakaroni pizza yeah things used to be different back there used to be a Anna. creepy pizza lady that would come to my door and my mom would be like chris she wants to say hi to you and oh. she'd like pinch my cheeks oh. and like hi oh. Sunny, oh. here's your cheese pizza. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna grow up to be so dumb. One I miss day. that lady. I wonder where she <laughs> is. That? She's dead. Probably. I have some fire bad marshal days. bill. Was, was the pizza delivery person? It's, it, it felt a little. It felt a little fire marshal bill. It, it, it fire Let me give you something. <laughs> uh, She's uh, Irish well, okay, now. Now, now, Dan, you guys Would are you like impre- a shakaroni pizza. <laughs> you guys are impressed by the pizza delivery people. How about I yearn, I yearn, for a time when the cab driver or the driver of any sort, livery cab, whatever, knew how to get to places. Nowadays, these Uber drivers don't even know how to get to the airport. You don't need to know any other destination. The most frustrating thing the in my life right now is when an Uber driver is about to make a wrong turn. Oh, yeah. When I can oh. see, like, uh, our turn I, is like, no, it's up. It's a quarter mile. Why are we starting to turn now? And I'll just be like, no, it's the next one. <laughs> You guys do that move, or it's just like it's always. Not, it's, it, you're I, passive. You're I, I start a, you're, to scratch the back of my head, like I'm like accidentally saying it. Like it's actually up there. <laughs> the thing is, Dan, you know when there's there's routes. Since you live at your house, mm-hmm. you know that there's specific ways to go at specific times. And sometimes the GPS will put you in a way mm-hmm. where it's like, I know Shay. I can't go down the street at mm-hmm. this time. We got to go the other way. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell the guy, Hey, don't listen to the GPS. I'll tell you where to I go. I got reprimanded by my wife and a oh. friend the other day because I told the UPS driver, you're going the wrong way. And they both said, let him do his job. Why were you in the UPS truck? 
I'm sorry, an Uber driver. Wow. I had Danny. Another scam. Oh, yes. wow. I, I was tricked. Damn. I was tricked. I was in an Uber. That's exactly <laughs> what I He told you, hey, t- go take said, that box over there to that door. I would have said, why am I in this truck? What came Brown do for you? I called an Uber, and then the UPS truck shows up. He opened his Let back door and just walked right in. You did a shift with a UPS driver? I'm going to start opening it, I swear to God. Valentine's Day gift. Yourself. Dan came home wearing brown shorts. <laughs> what can brown do for you, Dano? Can uh, Steve can, Martin. can you guys explain to me why it is that uh, that pizza is the great unifier? Because I think pizza might have to be the greatest of all the things. Where Jessica, the way that she lit up at the idea of the childhood her ordering a shakaroni pizza. <laughs> what is that? I don't even shakaroni know. What the- shakaroni pizza. Shakaroni pizza? Shakaroni. 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 Okay. Um, the delight that came over you with that, uh, I wonder if the thing that we all love the most is pizza together. It's the greatest it's, thing. It's the all-time, equal, it's the number one seed in terms of you want to have a food that almost everybody can enjoy. I'm not even talking about food. I'm talking about a thing. A thi- wow. Is pizza the greatest? The number yes. one seed of is everything? Is pizza the yes. greatest thing? Is pizza? Sex if, would if, like if, a if, word. If we, oh. Well, it's just like pizza. <laughs> wow. You just cut him off on that one. <laughs> he just gave up. Can we, sex put, would can like we a cut word. that noise, please? Yeah, sex would like a word. Oh. Okay, it's probably better, but not for Dan me. Dan just goes, pizza, oh. Pizza. I mean, pizza's just, I love pizza. Uh, pizza with sex. Winning the lottery? Eh. <laughs> okay, food. Fine. Good pizza over the lottery. Food. I'm 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 rattled because everywhere now I see a scam. <laughs> it's it's how Stugatz has gotten away with it all these years. He is the guy on the side of that road trying to sell me jewelry. A book that's still unwritten. <laughs> So how is that possible? He has had giant meetings with Skipper and publishing companies. He's got a giant publisher. How is his book not written? He's number one on Amazon. How is his book not written? And he's, I've got things to do. I don't have time. The, it, it hurts. It to would be another a, scam on you, Dan. A thousand words. You should have someone else write it for you. Because oh. it's Stugat. Like, you know, I feel like there's some. He won't read it. Yeah, he won't know. That's a good idea. I'll, I could you want me to write it? it? I'll write it for Chat you. Chat GPT. I'm not doing that. Yeah, have Chris write it and have spelling mistakes and stuff. <laughs> Backwards S. A book that's still unwritten. It's number one on Amazon. It can't be number one. What what obscure category? In the, in the category of unwritten but still yet available for purchase. <laughs> and the only one. It's a one of a kind book, it's right? Like, Not written by its author. Sports essays, I believe. <laughs> no. Number one sports and essays. How? I, 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 how? A book that's still unwritten. <laughs> it's because I'm the sucker. 